What's up everybody, I'm Hoops and Hip Hop and I have got a fun one for you guys today. With over 800 Pokemon in existence, there's obviously a lot of information here for fans to try and remember, and there's most certainly a lot of interesting details and things about these Pokemon that you might not have known about or noticed. So today we are going to be covering Pokemon design secrets, and I've got my friend Pokedan with me here today to help me out. Hey guys, Pokedan here. Like Hoop said, we're going to be covering some Pokemon design secrets in this video. These are basically going to be details or features of certain Pokemon designs that are really interesting but also easy to miss if you're not paying close attention. Some of them are intentional, some of them might just be a coincidence. Some of them are funny, but they're all pretty interesting. Hoops and I also did a video over on my channel covering some of the strangest Pokemon species ever. So head over there after this video if you're interested. With all that being said though, let's check it out. Okay, so this first one is one of those unintentional yet funny ones, and that would have to do with Psyduck's nose. If you take a look at Psyduck's nose, it perfectly resembles a ghost, with Psyduck's nostrils being the eyes and then the curvature around its bill being the arms and the head. And trust me, once you see this for yourself, you'll never be able to unsee it. Next up we have Oddish, or rather we have Oddish and Jumpluff, because if you look at these two Pokemon, their bodies are literally exactly the same. The only difference in their designs is Oddish has leaves on its head and Jumpluff obviously has the cotton, but as far as their body goes, they're literally exactly the same, both being blue spheres that are exactly the same shade of blue practically. They both have red eyes and they both have their little stubby feet. They're basically the same Pokemon. Now this next one is one of my favorite ones on this list because it's just so ingeniously hidden into this Pokemon's design and we are going to be talking about Remoraid here. Now while it's been figured out by fans over the years that Remoraid is based on a gun, it's certainly not an obvious thing to see. However, if you take a close look at Remoraid, you'll see just how many features of a gun it truly has in its design. If we take a look at Remoraid's larger lower fin, that's going to represent the handle of the gun, and if we go a little bit up its body from there, it's got another smaller fin that's going to represent the trigger. From there, we can head toward the back of its body towards its butt, and you'll notice a few stripes, and these actually represent the divots in a revolver if you look closely enough. This back portion of its body is also rounded like a revolver as well, and then if you look at the front part of its body and its head, it is shaped in a conal-like fashion resembling that of a bullet. So Remoraid's body is literally a bullet coming out of a gun complete with the handle and the trigger, and it all blends seamlessly into its design to the point where you can't even really tell unless you look closely. Absolutely genius. Moving over to the Hoenn region, we've got a fun little detail about Zigzagoon and Linoon. So, it's been pretty obvious right from the get-go that Zigzagoon features a zigzag pattern as the signature part of its design. But its evolution Linoon also relates to this, and counters it by featuring straight lines as part of its design. Hence the name Linoon. This might be one of the more obvious ones on this list, but we thought it was still fun to mention. Okay guys, this is for sure the one that you have all been waiting for, because we're talking about Nuzleaf. Now, Nuzleaf might seem like a pretty standard Pokemon, but it's actually a unique specimen since it seems to be the only confirmed Pokemon as of right now to have actual nipples. I know this is the type of quality content you guys subscribe to Hoops for, and he wanted me to tell you he is proud to bring you this information. And to round off the Hoenn section of this video, we have Skitty. Now, Skitty evolves into Delcatty through the use of a Moonstone. Which might seem kind of out of place at first glance, but if you take a closer look at Skitty, you'll be able to see that it actually has a crescent moon design on its face, which helps to make its method of evolution make a little bit more sense. Moving on to Generation 4, I have the privilege of talking about the god of the Pokemon world, and that would of course be none other than Bidoof and its evolution Bibarel. If you take a close look at the nose and the teeth of these Pokemon, you'll be able to see that it perfectly resembles a cupcake, with the teeth being the base and the outer wrapping of the cupcake, with the big brown part of its snout being the main part of the cupcake, and then its actual nose being a sort of cherry on top. And once again, like Psyduck's nose, once you see this, you won't be able to unsee it, so uh, you're welcome. 
Okay, this next one is a rather interesting one, and that would have to do with Probopass. While Probopass and its pre-evolution Nosepass are known for being based on the heads of Easter Island, it seems like Probopass has another inspiration to its design that may or may not be intentional. Probopass actually has several distinct similarities to the stereotypical look of a Jewish person. If you look closely, it's got the big hat on its head, which even though that does come from Easter Island, also represents the big hats that Jewish people sometimes wear. It's got the big nose that can be correlated that with the stereotypical big noses of Jewish people, and it's got the mustache, which once again is stereotypical of Jewish people. I have no idea if this is intentional or not because there's no mention of Jewish inspiration on Probopass's Bulbapedia page, but either way, it's kind of an interesting detail. Now we are gonna make our way into Unova with the grass starter Snivy and its evolutions. One of the reasons why people don't like Snivy and its evolution Servine is because they both have legs and arms, and obviously snakes don't have legs and arms. However, when it evolves into Superior, it obviously loses those legs and arms, and this is actually an ingenious way of showing the snake's evolution over time. Thousands and thousands and maybe even millions of years ago, snakes used to have legs. However, over time they evolved and they lost their legs and became the form that we ultimately know today. Where Snivy can represent the snakes of thousands and thousands of years ago that had snakes, but then as it evolved, just as actual snakes evolved, it lost its legs when it became superior, just as actual snakes lost their legs when they become the modern snakes we know today. This is a really cool part of Snivy's design and hopefully it helps you appreciate the grass starter just a little bit more. So when you look at Rock and Roller, you might think of it as just the Unovan equivalent of Geodude. If you're clever, you might have noticed that Rock and Roller gets its name from Rock and Roll. But what you might not have seen is that the naming inspiration is illustrated by the fact that Rock and Roller's design is based on a music speaker. Ironically though, this music inspiration isn't really reflected in either of its evolutions. Speaking of Unova Pokemon with musical designs, Tim Pole is actually very musical inspired. If you look closely, you can see what are supposed to be headphones covering its ears. Its eyebrows are shaped like music notes, and even its tail resembles that of a metronome. Now here's a classic one that you might know already, but it's still really, really cool, so it definitely had to be brought up. The Univan Legendary Dragons, Reshiram, and Zekrom actually have a pretty cool secret hiding in their design, and that's that they're actually the real Pokemon equivalent of the Blue Eyes White Dragon and the Red Eyes Black Dragon from Yu-Gi-Oh! Because if we look at Reshiram, it is obviously a white dragon with blue eyes, and if we look at Zekrom, it is a black dragon with red eyes. On top of that, these Pokemon also fuse together with Qrem, which calls back to Yu-Gi-Oh!'s mechanic of palmerization in the trading card game. Moving into Kalos now, it's hard for me to decide personally whether or not this one is kind of a stretch or not, or whether it's intentional or unintentional, but I thought it was interesting, so I thought I would go ahead and mention it nonetheless. Some people on the internet have actually pointed out that Froki actually bears a resemblance to Ben Franklin of all things, and if you take a look at Froki and stare at it for a few seconds, it's actually possible to see this resemblance. The two circles that are at the tip of Froki's nose are said to represent Franklin's signature glasses, and the the bubbles that are around Froki's neck and towards its chest are said to represent Franklin's hair as well as his handkerchief that he wore around his neck. And finally getting into the Alola region, we've got one that is pretty well known thanks to all the Sun and Moon pre-release coverage. But it's literally the definition of a design secret, so we're gonna cover it here anyway. The Gen 7 starters Rowlet, Litten, and Poplio were all found in one way or another to heavily resemble the alchemical symbols of salt, sulfur, and mercury. Due to the ever-increasing alchemical undertones of the Pokemon games lately, this this was likely intentionally done by Game Freak themselves. Gen 7 also blessed us with the first ever koala Pokemon in Kamala, and despite missing a huge opportunity by not having an evolution, it's still a pretty cool Pokemon. However, while probably unintentional, Kamala also looks exactly like Martin Van Buren who was the 8th president of the United States. It's also funny that this connection occurs considering Froki's possible connection to Ben Franklin that we discussed earlier, and the fact that Alola is also a region based on part of the United States. 
And there we have it, everybody. Now, this video was honestly a blast to make, and I really hope you guys found at least a few of these details interesting. If you did, be sure to give the video a like and let me know down in the comments below which one of these details was your favorite. I also want to go ahead and take a moment to thank Pokey Dan for joining me today. My man, it was a lot of fun. No problem, man. As I said earlier, Hoops and I also made another video over on my channel covering some of the weirdest Pokemon species that currently exist. So if you want to check that out, you can click the iCard or the link in the description to follow us over there. Thanks again for having me, Hoops. Anytime, man. Okay, well, I'm actually going to go ahead and head over to Dan's channel now. So if you're new here, be sure to subscribe for more new Pokemon videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. I will have a new one on Tuesday, so be sure to hit the notification bell for that. And I will see you guys over on Dan's channel. And until the next one here, as always, I will smell you guys later.